Um, so I want to talk to you tonight briefly about the school master plan study and then the Emory Grover School Administration and Operations Feasibility Study. Um, first of all, the uh, school master plan study, and let me just share some high level key activities that have occurred over the last few years. Um, in May of 2019, the master plan was approved through your efforts at town meeting. Um, and then hiring a consultant, a designer, Doran Whittier, in spring of 2020, it was presented to the school committee uh, right around that time when things, you know, the lights started to go out, if you will. Um, and uh, about a year ago, on October 6th, after deliberation, the school committee voted on master plan. It was so-called option D, which is tackling Pollard first as a six through eight building and uh, then quickly following that up with Mitchell as the second project, which would be funded through an MSBA um, with partners with the MSBA, I, sh I should say, if, if it were approved by the MSBA. Both important, both challenging, and both expensive projects. And by the way, the big idea is by doing Pollard first, um, you would be able to construct it, move sixth graders over to the new building, still have a school within a school concept, but a 6-8 middle school program where they can share facilities. High Rock would be available then for Mitchell students to move into so that you could begin a Mitchell project. Just as a to remind you that if we start a Mitchell project first, we have to build a temporary school somewhere in town at the cost of at least $40 million. So it's a, it's a challenging projects to, projects to wrap your head around because what makes the most sense, what's affordable, and uh, what is, uh, you know, what is um, the right way to proceed. In any event, when, when I asked you to vote this option on October 6th, I said it was the first step in a multi-step process and it could end up changing a bit. Well, sure enough, in the winter of spring of 2021, the master plan has been discussed by town boards. Um, it was shared with town meeting. And uh, over the summer, uh, June through August actually, a facilities working group convened by the select board, including PPBC members, CPC members, uh, members of the finance committee, select board, school committee, have been meeting to talk about town and capital school projects, including um, school master plan, the DPW plan for additional space, and school administration operations building. And it's been a conundrum because there are many projects that have a big price tag in a short time frame that the town is really feeling stressed to be able to accomplish uh, without a huge burden on the taxpayer. So um, what we've decided to do is to ask Doran Whittier to extend their study, maybe take some of the ideas of the thinking over the summer and, and um, take some of the financing plans that the, the town's finance director has considered and propose some, an extension, um, an enhancement, or maybe a new timeline or option uh, for Pollard and for Mitchell. On August 18th, the Finance Committee voted to provide those funds from their reserve fund uh, to the tune of uh, $60,000. That will complement additional dollars that are already left over from the feasibility study. And Doran Whittier are now at work. Um, pretty soon we will convene another working group, Madam Chair, and we'll ask for uh, perhaps um, a member of the school committee. It could be who's ever representing uh, for this project on the Permanent Public Building Committee. But we would have a working group as we did uh, before that would involve a, a select board member, a finance committee member, town staff, the principals of, of the three schools impacted. Um, and this, bro this broad-based committee would then work with the architect to present probably, Anne, I would say in the spring, late spring, maybe not in time for town meeting, but we're really not sure. Iterative process. Uh, this iterative process will occur. So, uh, it could be, it could be six months. It could be maybe a little longer. In any event, they'll come forward uh, again to the school committee, and I hope part of that is engaging the community with some focus groups at the community public meetings, where really folks can talk about the plans and, and see what's important to them and where are they at, and, and share all that. Um, so, those are some of the key activities that have hurt, happened with the school master plan. I want to spend a little bit of detail talking about the other. Um, plan that's out there, 
And this is the School Administration and Operations at the Emory Grover uh, building, um, the building where uh, the, uh, the five of, of, of us at this end work. On May, May 2018, the um, feasibility study was funded by town meeting through your efforts. On May 5th, 2020, the feasibility study was presented to the school committee and subsequently, just about a year ago, um, actually a, a, year, a year ago, you voted to renovate the Emory Grover building. There were several options. You voted to, to, to renovate it uh, for school operations. And then in March 2021, the Community Preservation Committee, which had been discussing the project for well over a year, um, they continue to discuss funding for an historic renovation and they have targeted about $6 million or so for the project. Um, however, they have not taken a formal vote on um, whether or not they will fund the project yet, in part because it was pulled, which is the next bullet, it was pulled from town meeting um, last May because the school committee decided that, you know, this might need a little bit more conversation um, given all the moving parts and pieces with projects that are being discussed. And so, again, over the summer, this same broad-based group met and also talked about the Emory Grover building. Um, I will tell you, I think that there are a variety of opinions, um, uh, some strong on, on that working group about what makes the most sense for school administration and operations. I'll talk about some of that in a moment. I want to share some slides and, and pictures. Um, <clears throat> tonight, I'm recommending um, something that the school committee said to town meeting last May, and that was we will come back to you in the fall with a request for design funding for a school operations and administration project. And so tonight, later on, I'm going to recommend to you a warrant article that will request funds uh, at the October 25th special town meeting. Now, discussions are still ongoing about school operations among the finance committee, select board, PPBC, the school committee. You may after tonight, if you support this warrant article that I'll recommend later, you may decide to do any number of things. You can amend it later. You could pull it off of town meeting if you chose to. Um, you could enhance it in another way. But we're, we need time right now, uh, or we're short on time to get it ready. We have to bring it to the select board in the next uh, week or so, so it can make it to the uh, town meeting warrant because of the time involved. So tonight is the night we have to discuss it and vote on it just because of the very short time frame to get something to town meeting. Um, so let me just spend for a moment for members of the community who uh, perhaps uh, you know, are not as familiar with the operations at uh, what was the town's original high school on, on Highland Avenue. Um, as, as I discussed, we, we, we funded a feasibility study. Just to share with folks, um, we, EG is home, we affectionately call it EG, to uh, school operations. There are 42 plus employees. They say plus because on a daily basis during the school year, 20 other individuals, van drivers and nutrition service workers are in and out of the building. Um, but permanently based there are 42 folks. Um, and we really serve as a hub for school services in the community. I, I will say to you that um, I was quite disheartened embarrassed um, and, and frustrated that yesterday, again, I had to apologize to an individual, this time a new staff member who uh, uses a wheelchair, um, that he could not access the building without physical assistance up and down the stairs being picked up. Um, it, it is a, a complete lack of dignity, frankly, and this gentleman was incredibly gracious, understanding, um, but it's very hard to have these conversations. And each one of us in the central office has assisted someone um, who uses a wheelchair or uh, some other mode of, of, of getting around. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's disheartening. Um, that's bad enough. If that were the only thing we were dealing with, um, to me, that's the worst human factor involved. Uh, there just happened to be so many other critical elements of need. But that just happened yesterday, and, and I, I really think it's time, to, it's time to make a decision about what uh, the community wishes to do. And I know there have been some suggestions um, from the working group and from others in the town to say that, well, you know, the pandemic taught us that we can all work remotely, except that in the schools, we have been in school 
since the pandemic began, except for those first few weeks when we were all sent home. And even then, I have to tell you, the lights were on at the Emory Grover building. Um, but since students have been back in school, all of our schools, including the Emory Grover building, have been up and operating. Um, it's, it's a hub, it's a, it's a key source of energy and um, work for the district. And so to suggest that we can just send everybody home to their dining room table um, uh, is impractical, impractical, infeasible, and really would shut down the operations for um, school services throughout the town. Um, there are a variety of problems with the building, um, and I think they've been well articulated over the years. Um, I won't go into all of them right now. Uh, but um, they, they are many and they require uh, a complete overhaul. And yes, this is the seventh study uh, over 30 years. Um, and time and again, each one of these studies have suggested significant work or replacement or relocation even, um, but the town, because of other school projects, to be fair, the town of Needham has been very generous with its school projects, very generous. And, and the taxpayers have been, all of the town boards have been supportive of school projects. There is no question about that. And so we've deferred and delayed and deflected um, on several occasions. I think though uh, the time is, is, uh, is up now. The building, um, the building structurally uh, has been identified to be quite sound. It is the interior um, sagging steps, windows that no longer fit in their frame, systems like a boiler that is non-existent, um, and an inefficient workflow that really are what's needed, um, as well as uh, accessibility and energy efficiency. Um, I, I sometimes chuckle, I sometimes could cry at that sign that's up on the fourth floor um, that the sign hasn't been there since 1935. I think it's been replaced. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking about our great President Roosevelt in his first term in office, and that's when the first part of the building was uh, shut down. Again, as I said, we use the Emory Grover building. The community engages in the Emory Grover building to register to learn about school transportation, food service operations, special education and curriculum administration and testing and consulting and legal services all happen. Preparation for curriculum projects all in the Emory Grover building. Printing, mail distri distribution, human resources, onboarding, payroll, um, Needham Community Education is, is its hub there. And of course business and IT and office functions, training and the superintendent's office are, are also all included there. And yes, uh, there may be some opportunities to do some work remotely for some functions at certain times, um, but that would be very uh, few, um, and uh, it, it still requires a, a place um, to work where we can interact with the public and families and staff uh, because these services cannot be provided virtually. And by the way, the schools do not have space to house uh, EG and our operations. Um, one of the things that Needham does well is to build great schools for our kids, but Needham also does not overbuild. We do not build schools that have additional space. There is no training space in the town of Needham for the Needham Public Schools staff um, uh, besides Powers Hall where we could seat uh, during the day 50, uh, 50 folks or more for training, which we try to do. Um, on occasion. And yes, some training can be done online and we've been doing that for a while. But there are also times when you need to pull folks together. Um, we lack that in the EG building and we lack that in any of our school buildings, quite frankly, uh, because students are populating all of those spaces. So the project to cost a project. The one option the school committee identified is a uh, $28.5 million project, and of that amount, the CPC has discussed funding about $6 million of that, but it's an expensive project, there's no question. And so as a result of that, um, and, and the design, by the way, if I may, just for a moment, 
Uh, you will so Highland Avenue is on the bottom. The, the, the main building in, in black outline is there. That would be refurbished inside and then in addition. However, because of the conversations that have been ongoing, because of the need to reconsider some space and the reality that there are school projects pending, what's happening right now is that we've engaged the designer, we've engaged the central office staff to do a couple of things. One, we are going to propose in the next few weeks a, um, a reduced scope of the overall project by pulling, for example, instructional technology out of the building and leaving instructional technology at Hillside where they need space to unpack computers, process them, work with them, receive them, prepare them for uh, schools and other technology services. We're re-envisioning some of the spaces that were offices, now we're sharing them or we're opening them up. Um, we're trying to think about and we're bringing on someone, a consultant, to help us understand the work of the future and what did this pandemic teach schools, municipal governments, and corporate offices about what work might look like. Um, and we're going to apply those lessons to see if there's any way to streamline the program. We are also pursuing a, a request to get lease information for the town of Needham to see if maybe there's some space available in Needham that we could lease and the building could be abandoned altogether and we would just lease space. Um, we know that will be expensive. Uh, we know that would be a forever option. Um, but it's one of the things that we've been encouraged to explore. And so we are exploring all these options. Mostly though what we are doing is we're looking to see how we can reduce the scope of this building so that it does provide the hub of services I suggested, but perhaps in a more streamlined way. We think we can get there and I look forward to sharing some of that information with you in the next few weeks. I think I've talked about why it's important to renovate. Uh, let me say this though. Renovating this particular building, which is really at the hub of the, and anchors downtown, I think for the community is important. It's also easily accessible to a lot of families and folks, um, especially training because it's in the center of the town. Um, and, and it will, for the community feel, preserve the oldest public building in Needham and uh, help maintain that community feel and look. That was a factor in trying to decide if it made sense to renovate EG. Other options were explored. By the way, we could possibly renovate Hillside uh, for over $20 million. Um, and that's a preliminary early cost. But there are trade-offs there in doing that. Um, and uh, we think what we can come back to the school committee with and the community in a few weeks is um, the right project um, and, and a scope and scale that, that I hope and believe the community and town meeting um, potentially could support. And yes, finally, there are other projects that are, that are on the horizon. What's important though about these projects is that they are going to be involved with the MSBA. And the MSBA is going to have to be a partner and these are multi-year efforts. And I would suggest that while, if I could use this metaphor, you know, we, we have a house and we need to build a second floor for extra bedrooms for the new children who are arriving, um, but the furnace quit out at the same time. So let's be smart. Let's tackle the furnace first um, and make sure it's big enough to support the second floor when you do uh, and you are able to build that. Um, and I think that's what we're trying to do here, to suggest that the school administration and operations is the hub of services, the furnace, if you will, of the schools. Let's tackle that so that we can then be smart and make sure that we tackle um, the projects, uh, the last two major school projects. So I think I've repeated myself uh, with this last slide. I won't do any more. I hope though in a little while when you come to your action items, when I talk to you about this um, warrant article that uh, you might see that it makes sense to support that um, and uh, recognizing there's still more conversations to happen. In fact, the facilities working group has a meeting on September 9th. Um, so there are more conversations happening to continue that dialogue so that every town board can feel comfortable and perhaps get behind a project if you choose at the October town meeting. So, uh, Madam Chair, I think I will stop there. Those are the facilities updates for this evening and we're happy to uh, answer any questions you may have.
couple comments. Uh, I think there's agreement from what I understand it amongst many people in town that Emory Grover is no longer a safe or certainly comfortable or usable space for school administration. Where we seem to be getting stuck is what to do instead. And um, one of the really important things that the word hub is really important. This is a hub for 5,500 students or maybe a couple hundred less this year, but and a thousand staff, something like that. And it's a living, breathing building. This is not just people doing office work. And it's very important that we help others in the community uh, understand that. There's collaboration that goes on. Someone I saw in a post suggesting what, why isn't registration online? Well, registration can be online for many people. And then there are other families who don't have the online capability, don't have the language. Um, our English may be a second language. Many reasons that folks need help to do the registration that they need. Or maybe they just want to see the face of the schools that they are about to bring their children into. Um, I think about hiring. We want to hire an excellent staff. And if we don't have a human resources department centrally located where we can show off our school system, we, we don't have as much opportunity to hire the staff that we need, particularly as we're aiming toward more diversity in our staff. Um, the, the point is, it's, there's a lot that goes on in that building that's very important that is way beyond office work. I also would, uh, just one comment, and then I, I mean to open it up to everyone. There's been some online, um, chatter isn't the right word, online posts. And one of the things I just want to mention is that um, some of the accuracy perhaps hasn't been um, some of these posts have not been accurate. And there was one suggesting that, that our schools which need renovation may be deteriorating to the point of collapse and we just need to reassure our community that Mitchell and Pollard are not near the point of collapse. They're not near the point of collapse building wise or educationally. Um, they certainly do need <coughs> renovating for space and programmatic and other needs um, or replacement but just want to reassure the residents of Needham and the families of Needham that that is not the case. Um, and it will be important for folks looking at this to really look for the accurate information, which we will always have available on our website. And we are looking into ways of making that more easily available to folks. Um, colleagues. <clears throat> I'm getting a nod from Dylan anyway, so Mike. Thank you for the presentation and hearing again and, and knowing some of the feasibility studies and all the work that's been done before and, and the seven studies over the course of 30 years, um, hearing that the building itself from the structure is sound, um, but that there's so many internal components and having been in the building multiple times, certainly something needs to be done. And hearing the comments that you just shared, Connie, about several schools and are they going to just sort of, you know, collapse. So many staff are in there now. So many residents, um, students are continuing to go through there. At what point in seeing that um, the top floor has been um, inoperable for many decades, who's sort of the guidance to sort of say, you just got to get out of the building because hearing you know the unfortunate story of yesterday that you shared Dan about um, someone needing assistance and for other staff members who've had to be there what sort of does it take to sort of just say because if this has been going on for the last 30 years of all these studies and it just sort of gets put aside because of other priorities what sort of that's going to take to just be you, we got to get out well, I want to, again, I, the, the building um, is, is safe to be in, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, as long as you don't drink the water, because that's one thing we know um, in the building. I guess I would tell you as your superintendent, after all of these studies, after all the discussion, after everything we know, um, my suggestion to you is that if you are not successful at town meeting this fall, um, you try one more time in the spring and that could be funds to request to lease that could be funds to completely gut and renovate hillside which i think would end up being more money than the present plan 
but I think it would have to be one of those two things. And then I would suggest to you that uh, we should be out of that building uh, within a year, year and a half, if that's feasible. And, and by the way, if the town, if you agree to move forward with the Warren article, and if town meeting can support it, I don't have the exact timeline in front of me, but we would leave the EG building and we would go to Hillside temporarily while it's being renovated. Um, the good thing about that is that space is available. Now, the space has been chopped up. It's, it's not the most efficient. It's not the prettiest, but that's okay because it would be temporary for 20, 24 months. Um, and that makes sense. Um, but I, I guess what I'm saying to you, the time to make a decision about Emory Grover is during this school year, either October town meeting or May. One way or the other, a specific decision about when um, the building will be renovated or abandoned. Thank you. Liz. <clears throat> Um, I have a number of questions. I think they're basically um, pretty simple. The first is if leasing were an option, um, do you have any sense how long that would remain a financially reasonable option? At which point would we start losing money? Because obviously, as you said, leasing is not a long term. Yeah. Let Ann answer that, please. Is that a 20 year payback? <clears throat> So in 20 years, we would um, have paid as much as it would have cost us to renovate uh, the building, uh, and we still would not have a permanent facility. Okay. So in, um, in terms of that, and if, if, if we- I just, Liz, just one thing to add to that. If the decision is to lease, and, and that could be a decision, then that's the decision. There's no turning back from the leasing because there's no place else to go. So that, that, in my view, becomes a permanent decision for how, for what the, the operations of, of the school would be. Right, because so there, there then be, in 20 years, we would still be without a building for administration and we would still be throwing away rent, lease money. Um, and my second question was just a curiosity. I've also heard people talking about remote work and I was wondering um, if that was part of a larger plan to put uh, town Hall and DPW and Park and Rec, or is it a part of a larger plan to have everyone go remote? Um, well, we're, we're the only ones who are looking for a project, so that conversation has not come up on that okay. side as far as so I know. So this is specifically only if that were the choice, right? That, yeah. this let, let me say, I can't comment on whether or not the town is discussing okay. that. Right. I shouldn't comment, I don't know. But I know that it has come up because of the experience some folks have had working remotely, um, and therefore, that's what we should be doing. Okay, thank you very much. Andrea. Thank you, Connie uh, and Dan, for that presentation. I wholeheartedly support asking town meeting for design funds for a new and permanent home for our school administration and operations at the current site of the Emory Grover building. As Dan has mentioned and others as well, the need to address deficient and non-functioning building systems, a lack of handicapped accessibility, and inferior and unsafe working conditions has been examined and documented in seven studies over 30 years. Furthermore, there is widespread agreement among the school committee, select board, finance committee, and other town boards that something needs to be done about school administration. We must stop kicking the can and finally address the very real needs of our talented administrators and staff for safe, healthy, and functional working conditions. Criticism of this project seems to fall into one of three categories. The pandemic changed the need for office space, there must be somewhere else our school administrators can work, and the overall project cost. After our experience during the pandemic, some have questioned whether office space for school administration is really necessary. Indeed, one member of the select board has made public comments on social media and via email that include the following statements. I was repeatedly told how there was a need to renovate the building that houses office space for school administrators. 
I was honestly a bit confused and astonished given that office work, as we have certainly learned through the pandemic, can be done in any space, even from home. Also quoting, and many of the public facing functions of these administrative activities may be better done through upgraded technology, e.g. online registration slash payments. As I have spent time working with administrators and staff in the Emory Grover building during my six years on the school committee, there are vital public facing interactions and activities that happen and will need to continue to happen at a central location in our town to maintain efficient, inclusive and equitable operations for our school system. Remote work from someone's dining table or bedroom was a necessary band-aid during a global pandemic and is a poor substitute for important school business. The topic of registration has come up several times this evening. Some might argue that this can be done online and indeed much of the traditional registration process I engaged in with my children can happen online. However, online registration requires an internet connection and a device and it's significantly easier using a laptop rather than a mobile phone. We know not all of our families have access to this technology. They also may be unable to access the relevant information in their native language, or they may feel uncomfortable submitting documentation online. For the foreseeable future, we must maintain in-person registration capability for all school programs to ensure all of our students and families can access needed services. Merely because people can register online doesn't mean they can't, they, doesn't mean we can or should eliminate that activity from in-person service delivery. Moreover, what would it say about Needham's commitment to children and families, particularly those who might be from underrepresented or historically marginalized populations, if they are told, sorry, you can only do that online? There is also the notion that there must be a better and less expensive solution to the problem of where to put school operations. Many alternatives have been suggested now and in the past. One that has recently come up involves spreading school administrators across multiple town or school buildings. One select board member even suggested our staff could work at the new public safety building with our police and fire departments. School operations, as Dan has said, are like a hub and spoke system, and we need a centralized location for school administrators and staff to work with one another, teachers and parents in close proximity to our schools. This is much more difficult and incredibly inefficient for our customers who are Needham families and staff and community members when different functions are parceled out among multiple locations. Moreover, I welcome anyone to identify enough unused space in our school and town buildings to appropriately house school operations. In over 12 years living in this community, we are always looking for how we can shoehorn programs and people into limited spaces rather than wondering what to do with empty rooms. Groups studying this problem over many years have explored and presented different location options for school operations. However, these other options were discarded for multiple reasons and the preferred solution, one that is supported by the school committee and the permanent public building committee is a project at the current Emory Grover site. The final criticism lodged against this project is the cost. One member of our select board recently posted online that the cost of the Emory Grover project would equate to $714,285 per school administrative employee. This statement is unnecessarily inflammatory and not how we evaluate project costs. Rather, we evaluate municipal building projects using a variety of metrics. For example, what is an industry-wide standard for the square footage required for different types of activities? How many parking spaces are needed? How difficult or expensive is it to operate the building systems? What are the construction and total project costs per square foot? Are we including gold-plated fixtures or more value-priced ones? And finally, and most importantly, does the proposed project meet our programmatic, operational, and service needs? All construction projects are expensive, particularly these days. 
The school department has already done an internal review, as Dan mentioned, and we are engaging with the architect that conducted the feasibility study to see how the project cost and scope can be reduced. No matter what we do, it's going to cost money. But the time is now for Needham to invest in a permanent home for school operations. We need a long-term solution that provides adequate spaces for critical work, one that provides hospitable working conditions for our staff, unlike the conditions they've been working in for decades, and a welcoming place for Needham families and visitors. The current conditions are disgraceful, and it's time for Needham to stop kicking the can. I think well said. I'm sure we all think that. Michael. Thank you, Andrew, for putting together, I think, that detailed comment, especially response to what I think are some incredibly irresponsible comments. Um, we've all, we're all familiar with the saying that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and, get it and expecting a different result. And, and frankly, that's what I'm, I'm hearing. When I hear people say, why don't we look at this? Why don't we look at that? We have looked at this and that and the other thing and many other things. I don't even, the idea that we should go back and look at leasing again to me is crazy. Right? It's the most irresponsible thing for a municipality that is here for the long term. We are not a family plan to live someplace for two years and decide rent or buy. We are going to be here. We don't know what schools are going to look like in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, but we have made decisions over the years to build facilities in this town. All of them have been productively used and well built and well used. We have not wasted space. We have been very careful about how we build space. And that, as someone points out, is why. There are communities that have space that they've relocated administrative to in schools because they have schools they no longer need. That is not our problem. Um, it, is, it, it would be irresponsible to spend a lot of money on leasing to think about it. That's operational money, a couple million dollars a year. You're at the mercy of, re, of basically the commercial real estate market. And you spend several million dollars to fit out space and probably to renovate it periodically. That to me is a solution that we have talked about. We've been asked to look at it, we've looked at it, and it makes no sense. We need to solve this problem. I'm sorry, but we need to do this. It's been looked at long and hard. And I was quite frankly shocked when this notion of, well, the world's changed, nobody's going back to an office. There are CEOs and businesses who are straining to try to figure out when they can bring people back because that's the way people need to work. They need to engage, they need to interact. Does everything have to be done in person? No. There are meetings, travel that you don't have to do. We will learn, we'll do different things, but we will still need space to run what is essentially an over $100 million business. That's what we're doing. And it is a personal, it is a service-based business in which a whole lot of professionals give their time and they are working with people on site. This is not the kind of work that's done, this is not software development. This is people-based work. So we need to do this. It is the work that was done and the studies that we've done, even just in the last couple of years, we looked at the options. Now, I know we don't like to talk about the $6 million that we could potentially have from CPC. And yes, that is not a commitment. We understand that. But anyone considering the financial, the financials of a project have to look at, has to look and consider that's a possibility. We actually concluded that renovating that building costs less than tearing it down and has many other advantages. And there is a possibility, we do not know how much, but there is a possibility that we could, that cost would go down because we're using money that is already being put aside for projects like this. It's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Not counting on it, that's up to a lot of boards, a lot of conversations, the CPC and available funding. We understand that, but it would be irresponsible not to consider that possibility. That's how we approached town hall. And I don't see anyone saying the town hall was not a really good idea. It worked very, very well. Uh, and I think the same thing can be said of the Emory Grover project. Um, and I, 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 it disturbs me when people who have been part of this process are asking questions over again. I understand sometimes members of the public, it's new. We have to explain what we've been through, and that's fair. But I think people in positions of responsibility should take the time to look at the what we have been through before suggesting things that have been suggested and rejected multiple times. Um, there's a reason why we look at these things very carefully. And to me, this project makes a lot of sense and I, I think several people have said it. I can't believe we continue to allow people to work in those conditions. 
And the reality is that yes, our schools, we have school projects and we will have to figure out how to pay for those school projects going forward. That's what we've been doing for the last 20 something years as we have finally renovated our facilities. But the reality is that we put off EG intentionally. And I was part of those conversations many times over the last 15 years saying, you know what? We really need to Jeremy Grover, but you know what? This school has to come next because we understand. The superintendent and his staff and everyone endorsed that and said, yes, Emory Grover is not, is it really a difficult place to work, but let's do the schools first. Well, runaway's over. We can't do that anymore. So I support this unequivocally. We need to continue to work with finance committee, others who still have questions to make sure that they have looked at all this, bringing people into the building um, and just make clear that this is a project that needs to get done. And frankly, remember a lot of the costs that we talk about escalations, the longer we wait, the more these cost. And the reality is that today and for the next couple of years, the cost of borrowing money is as low as it will ever be. So frankly, infrastructure investments, like for the United States of America as a whole, true for Needham. This is a good time to make infrastructure investments. We're gonna pay less now than in four or five or six or seven years from any of these projects because we're gonna be financing them at very low rates. So to me, we need to move forward. If there's still questions to be answered, let's answer them. But unequivocally, we should be moving forward, asking for this funding, getting the design funding, and thank you for doing, you know, again, doing that continued what the PPBC calls value engineering, looking at things we could do to slim down the project. That's terrific, and I hope we can do that. Uh, but it's still a very good project, even if you didn't do that. But certainly, I hope you can, and if we can reduce the total cost by several million, perhaps that would be incredibly good. Thank you. Thank you. I think a lot has been said about Emory Grover. I don't think I have anything to add on that score. I certainly think it will be important to see the results of this latest uh, information that the Finance Committee and others have asked for before we get to town meeting, but I'm confident that we'll have it at that time. Um, I wanted to talk about the two large school projects, which, uh, as Dan alluded to over the summer, uh, as the financial modeling was done, it did seem that the preferred option of the school committee would be very difficult to finance in the car town's current kind of uh, budget framework and, and finances. So uh, I'm appreciative that we're going back to Doran Whittier for some other options. My concern about that debate, though, however, is around uh, the Massachusetts School Building Authority aid. So the MSBA can uh, fund about what ends up being about a quarter to a third of a project cost in Needham. That's what happened with Sunita Williams. But it's also the case that there's a huge line of towns uh, seeking MSBA help. Uh, everyone has to apply. The MSBA only accepts uh, a small number of the projects that are proposed. In this most recent round where they just announced this spring projects, only one high school for Agawam was approved. No other high schools were approved. As Dan and I were discussing uh, earlier this week, Lexington uh, has twice submitted for its very old, very overcrowded high school and has been rejected. So there's no guarantee that Needham gets to build Mitchell or redo Pollard uh, with the MSBA on the time frame that we dictate or we think would be best. And it's a little frustrating in some of the conversations and modeling uh, that assumptions are made that sort of if we snapped our fingers, we could have both of those projects financed by the MSBA. So in addition to just sort of putting out there the idea that this is not a good assumption, I'm curious, Dan, I don't know if there's a way to get some statistics maybe from the MSBA that would show sort of the queue and, you know, that 100 schools were sought and 12 were accepted, or I don't know the exact statistics, but, you know, it could be a very long wait. In Lexington, the superintendent is actually asking the town to do an exercise in cost-benefit analysis of how long would it wait while construction costs go up to get MSBA money, where it wouldn't even be worth it to get the aid anymore. If you're waiting more than six or seven years, uh, that 25% is gonna be eliminated by construction inflation. So I don't know how we can make this case better, but it's concerning. We will, you know, certainly Ann and I will think about that, and maybe it's uh, an opportunity um, before the MSBA now is in this period before they accept statements of interest in the winter. So maybe there's some time that we might be able to investigate, you know, what are some of the metrics they're using? What are what's some of the data they have to show, you know, um, 
I mean, Lexington was rejected. I wonder if other communities also have been rejected once or twice or more, and what were the circumstances? So that will all help, as you said, you know, feed into this discussion. So we'll get, to, we'll see what information we can get. Um, Liz and Michael. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for the very clear case you put forward, especially for Emory Grover and also Aaron's um, clarity around how the process works. And as we're having this conversation, sometimes these posts that we're reading or other talk that we're hearing comes from a place of um, lack of knowledge about how the system works. Um, as we know, because we sit and we read, these are incredibly complicated and um, public school districts don't often do exactly what they want to do when they want to um, because we're overseen by the state and the federal government. So I'm wondering if there are resources that can help the general public gain a better sense of how these um, processes work or I'm guessing not because I think we would have found them. But the other option is when we're discussing these very complicated um, projects that we're doing, finding a way to offer a very short bullet pointed 101. So as we're having this discussion about the MSBA, anybody who is watching this in the future may not even know what that is. So it's the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Did I get that right? And they're the state agency that will pay a percentage of public school building projects. And so um, I think that is the one thought I have as we're having this really pretty high level discussion about a, a couple really complicated projects is that we're jumping and not everybody is jumping with us. I'll just take a quick, make a quick comment. One of the things I've read is people are saying, why wasn't uh, school administration added to the Sunita Williams building? There are several reasons. One is the space would not be large enough unless one built a much higher building to accommodate what's needed for school administration. And the other is we're limited in any of these projects by MSBA guidelines, and which is, as you're saying, something that's hard to understand until you've been through it a couple of times. So, sorry, Michael. Okay. <clears throat> That, that's helpful, Liz, to always remind people of these things. Um, to Aaron's point, I think just to do that in essence is to say that one of the important things, the MSBA is, it's a penny on the, on the sales tax. That's where the money comes from. So it is in the MSBA's interest to do projects. They are not, they are not there begging for money saying, oh, we can only, we only want to do a few projects. They have money that they want to spend and the taxpayers have given it to them and they need to spend it and they need to spend it responsibly. Um, we have been very successful at the MSBA because we have a record for doing good planning, not going back and forth and constantly changing our minds on things. And when we commit to doing a project, we deliver. We get the funding from the town, we get the job done on time and on budget. And that, that carries weight with the MSBA. Now we're also economically, you know, we, we are in a pretty good place as a community. Um, so, you know, but as more communities have needs and bring forward good projects, to Aaron's point, even communities like ours may have to wait longer. But I, I want, I mean, the community should understand that we've been very successful because we do this kind of long-term planning. Because we look at these and say, this is what we need to do, and this is when we think we need to do it. We do a lot of careful forecasting, so we do not build capacity we do not need. Um, and I think that has served us well. Um, so it's imp I think it, it is important to remember that. And to your point about Lexington, I think that's a very good one. That you know, a lot of when you look at the funding and the estimates for construction, the numbers just escalate incredibly fast. Partly because the construction cost escalation that's put in there is pretty conservative in the sense that they use a fairly high cost of escalation for construction. Um, but even if you just looked at the rate of inflation. Um, you know, at 3% a year, these projects are going to go up, but so will the community's capacity to pay for it. So I think that's one of the things that the numbers are very large and we still have to figure out how to pay for it because quite frankly, those projects that Aaron mentioned, the two big projects, they would be a lot for this town to be able to pay for in a short time. And right now they're connected in a way that makes it hard to separate them. And we certainly can't wait 15 years to do one of these projects or 20 years 
to see one project be paid for. So we're going to have some, you know, some hard work to do. And I, and I think it's fair to, you know, we, I'm glad we're looking at it and we'll continue to look at it. The community should understand. We recognize the community has been very generous. We built our facilities. We have the kind of facilities we want. We have to now maintain them. And we have to finish the job and we'll do it responsibly. One of the things you started saying, Michael, is that some trust is built up between the town of Needham and the MSBA because of projects we've done with them before. They know us, we know them, and that has been successful. But there may be other projects ahead of us. Aaron. I'll just, I'll just say one of the reasons that Lexington uh, came to mind is because just like us, they did a few years ago a, a, an elementary school of about the same size as Sunita Williams. And I think part of the issue is the MS, regardless of how great our record is and how wonderfully we worked with them, you know, they have to go around to all the different towns. and. Uh, you know, we have to wait our turn sometimes. Liz. Um, and I just want to add on to what Aaron said that as um, challenging as it to think, there are actually other schools within the Commonwealth that need renovation more than Pollard or Mitchell. Pollard or Mitchell are older. They're not ideal for our needs, but um, they're still pretty functional buildings. There are places in the Commonwealth that would receive higher sort of um, rating of need because they are in much worse condition. Unless there are other comments, I think we'll have a chance shortly to um, hopefully show our support for moving forward and asking this town to move forward on the, uh, the design funds for Emory Grover. Um, I'm not expecting that everyone will vote the same, but we've got a lot of interest in that direction.